Hey all you phenoms and filibusters, coffee on a Tuesday and vlog 56. So, I cheated a lot in high school and college. Usually it was by the old classic method of just looking over at the person's test next to you. Sometimes I'd write information on a little crib sheet or save stuff in my trusty TI-83 calculator, and I do vaguely remember trying to steal tests from a teacher's desk once, though I can't be sure if that was only something I saw in a movie. Oh, thank you. Mostly I cheated on tests or homework, never really on term papers. I never plagiarized. For some reason, getting caught plagiarizing seemed like the worst thing that could happen to you when I was in school. Although, for my very final paper in college, I did hand in my roommate's history essay on the Nazis. I was taking a sociology class, but you know, the Nazis, they really cover a lot of ground. <laughs> I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about it since. Really, I didn't think about it much at the time. I suppose I just knew that the old adage, cheaters never win, was just a crock of shit because I cheated and won. Now, I don't encourage cheating, of course not, but it is a part of my life and I think it's worth exploring a little bit more. Cheating is simply acting dishonestly to gain an advantage. In high school, what was the advantage that I wanted or thought I needed to gain? Well, where I went to school, the primary purpose of school was not to learn, although that was not a negative upshot. The primary purpose of school was to get good grades so we could get into a good college. So when we graduated, we'd have the empirically proven advantage of getting a good job so we wouldn't be degenerates. The motivational structures were achingly clear. The point was to get good grades, not to get good grades Honestly, the only reason to act honestly was that you wouldn't run the risk of getting caught cheating, which would, after all, injure your ability to achieve the goal in the first place. The ironic thing is that so pressured as we were to achieve the good grade and the good college and the good job, we saw no qualms in cheating to get there and having cheated to get there and having got there with the good job in a world where cheating is much, much less viable, we all have work ethics that are absolute shit, and we're all that much closer to being degenerates. Sometimes I laugh about that randomly on the subway or just walking down the street and people look at me strangely, but it's just the kind of joke that's too damn funny to keep in, you know? Can you blame me for cheating? Of course you can, I cheated. And I'm not the only one. A Rutgers study from way back in 1997, before there were SAT prep courses that surveyed 1,800 people in nine state universities found that three-fourths Three out of four people cheated on exams or written assignments, and you can blame them too. But the epidemic of cheating in school, in science, in sports is something that we're all on the hook for. And let's never buy into that bullshit that I am the only one responsible for my actions or you are the only one responsible for yours. We're all responsible for one another. In each act of cheating, we perform a cost-benefit analysis. Think of the 16-year-old me taking that physics exam. If I get caught, I may get a bad grade on the tests, a call home to my parents, or detention. Well, detention is nothing. A call home to my parents sucks, but they only want me to get good grades, and a bad grade sucks too, but my teachers and my school want what my parents want for me to succeed. If I don't get caught, I'll have successfully bypassed work that I didn't want to do in the first place, and I'll have moved further down that motivational yellow brick road that leads to a good career and, of course, Oz. Or you know, the upper middle class version of Oz, which is, I don't know, a fondue maker? Just watch Mad Men. Cheating is an activity latent in all nature as a way for organisms to gain an advantage without incurring the cost of effort. I was reading recently that Pseudomonas bacteria exploit the goods generated by cooperating bacteria without sharing in the production, those bastards. Fish cheat, primates cheat, we cheat on tests, on diets, on the Tour de France, on spouses. Ah, but there's the rub. Infidelity is a kind of cheating that it's impossible for us to justify, right? Because it's the abuse of relationships for personal gain. It's easy for us to feel why it's wrong to exploit another person, especially someone so invested in us as a significant other for a cheap thrill. As we move out of the educational system with its painfully mistaken motivational cues, it becomes clear to us, it became clear to me, that this is the foundation of all kinds of cheating, the leveraging of another person for personal betterment. And we all know how levers work. As someone moves up, someone else, somewhere, 
perhaps by subtle conduits, gets pushed down. This, I suspect, is the true meaning of that adage, cheaters never win. Even if you get away with it out there, even if you're not aware of the consequences of your actions, you can never truly get away with it in here. But for the sake of honesty and a less rainbow, sunset, everything is lovely and will work out ending to this vlog, let me ask you, cheater, have you gotten away with it? If I don't eat, I just might die. This work is making me Shit, so is that bourbon? <laughs> I feel so damn lazy. Hey everyone, sorry the vlog is so late this week. The reason is that I was sent up to Boston uh, earlier this week to cover the marathon bombing story. Um, a, a surreal and unexpected week to be sure. Um, so thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully we can get back on schedule uh, for next week. And um, I'll see you next time.